these, what would I be looking for? Um, you can get uh, you can get them for you wouldn't want this one for personal. You'd probably want something like a rye gold, and they're probably fifteen hundred dollars. One like this would sell normally with all of the options in it for close to thirty thousand. This. Uh, <laughs> so, so, the, so the question is, how long have I had this one? Um, this one is not mine. It's on a long-term loan. Uh, because I do a lot of work for a uh, regional district in Victoria, they have put it on loan to me. They don't normally do that, but for what I do for them, they do for me. So this lives on my uh, test bench at home, and normally I don't bring it out. I wouldn't bring it out for a single person, but a group like this where we've got lots of stuff and we want to bring the network up to a certain level, I've brought it out tonight so we can do that. Okay? So it's, it's actually owned by a Capital Regional District. What, what year would that have been manufactured? It's not a new one by any means. It, uh, it has some calibration stuff that probably goes back probably 10 years, 10, 12 years, and it was probably way before that. I don't know when they, the, the 120Bs came out. Remember when they came out, Steve? What, what frequency does that go up to? Uh, I think it's a gig. So those things were designed for cellular telephone or cellular sites, and a lot of them are life cycled out because cellular now is above one gig, and those things are now useless. Yep. And you, can, and you can buy these quite and that's inexpensive. Why that's why they're inexpensive now. They're brand new usually. Or We've got one in our club. It's an HP. Um, we've paid $4,300 for it. And it has the uh, tracker generator so we can do the, all the tune cavities. And yep. Pay $4,300 for it. It's a gorgeous thing. Now, do we need this to do the deviation settings? No. You can most certainly get a deviation meter and hook it up to a receiver. And if it's calibrated, you can calibrate it against something that is calibrated, and then you could use that. So if a club wanted to do something, they didn't have to get something like this and spend lots of money on it. They could do something a little bit less. Uh, a lot of guys, I've uh, gone to radio groups and that, and the guys, oh, I've tuned my own. I said, well, how did you tune it? Oh, I tuned it by ear. It's perfect. It's right on. And it's never happened. It has been tuned perfectly. Now what we're, the target we're trying to hit here is the deviation level is 2.75 kilohertz. It's not what Cantronix says. Cantronix comes out and says it's got to be this. Well they don't live here where we have waters, we, we have water that reflects our signal, we got mountains to bounce our signals. So we did two years I went and did testing on deviation levels and it came up with 2.75 is, is, is the key for, for our mountainous water area. Especially where I'm from, because I've got 17 miles away, I've got a, a, a mile high mountains, the Olympic range there. So I got water right outside the door kind of thing all the way to bouncing off hills. So. Did you define deviation level? Say it again? Define deviation level. Okay, so on FM, it's frequency modulated. So if you think of it, it, it like a carrier would be here and you, when you talk on it, it changes frequency. So if you change too much frequency, it then becomes outside of the passband you want it to be. Okay? So normally what we do, and there's a couple of reasons why I like people to have airmail on their machine, because airmail is one of the best diagnostic tools we have for COM ports. It has a dumb terminal mode to it, which is like any other terminal, but it's built around finding out whether the CTS, clear to send, and the, and the DSR is, is there. So as soon as you plug in, you see two green lights, you know that you got the right COM port, then you have to just change the speed and you got it done. So when Winlink Express, if it ever gets out of, out of whack, first thing I do is close down that session, bring up the dumb terminal, or the uh, airmail, and I say, fix it. And it goes, done. And then I drop that out and I go back. So one of the reasons I use airmail is because it's very much the same 
and easier to use than Winlink's simple terminal. And we'll, we'll, you know, a lot of this stuff might seem a little different to everybody because it's not something you do every day, but you'll, you'll kind of catch it after a period of time. That's what I want to do is get you guys so you feel comfortable with some of this stuff. Okay? Steve, did you want to operate your computer? <coughs> Terminal's up right there. You see terminal? Black screen. <laughs> so the first thing I have to do on the service monitor is set the frequency. So we set the frequency by, by entering it right here, 144.970. So now it's looking at the frequency that the radio's on, and this one is not on that. No, it's on 39. So, have you got it programmed in, or do, do you want to just, just... Just go to 3.9 for that one, if you want to Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go against, against all, all odds here. He has it on a uh, frequency there's, there's, for... There's 9.7. There's 10.7. Okay. And, uh, let's see, we have, a, we have a microphone, and let's just see what we have. We Okay, that's good. Well, uh, I need my, now my, I'm just getting, getting set up. The first one is always the one that takes the time. And the radio. Just takes a bit to get it. So as you see, that's the that's the uh, the, the carrier frequency, 144.97. So it's it's off by 632 hertz, well within specifications. The transmitter on this is 43.6 watts. And if I want to just scroll down to the deviation and hit enter, we can see that the deviation here is uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's almost five kilohertz of deviation. That's what we need for voice, it's wideband, so that's, that's exactly what we're looking for, voice. Now what the, what the modem does, it modulates and demodulates, that's what's called a modem. They take the first part of each one and, and that's the, uh, the terminology. So it generates two tones. Um, in, uh, and I'll just bring up the terminal here. And we'll go into the calibrate mode, that is at the prompt. CMD colon, we type CAL. When you hit enter, it brings up a small menu. We have mark, uh, receive, space, uh, square wave. And so what we want to do is use a square wave and set it to 2.75 kilohertz of deviation. Steve, is this a plus? Okay, so the KPC3, um, you have to take the lid off and it's got a potentiometer for adjustment. On the three plus, it's done with what's called soft keys. So I have two keys on the computer, the plus and the minus, and that raises and lowers the deviation level. So if I hit the, the and, and this machine has a dummy load in it, so we can transmit into it and not <coughs> worry about damaging his radio. So now we have it, it transmitting, and it is currently at 0.83 kilohertz of deviation. So, what I'll do is I start hitting the plus, and you'll just watch that part right there. And we hit the plus, we just keep going until we get to 2.75. And you can hold it down too and get there a lot faster, but it, all of a sudden it'll go, whoop, and it'll go, take off and go very quick. So, 2.75. 2.74, about as close as we can get. I hit the space bar. Now that's all there is to tune it up. Just that simple. And if I hit X to get out of the calibration mode, and I type X mit L, which is the transmit level, and it has a number of 142. At that point, I would suggest that we put a label on this. Laura, have we got some of the small labels that are sitting in one of those? I did bring a, a few labels, but it might be a little second to see if she can find it. 
It might be up on the top floor, I'm not sure. I slipped it in beside something. So Steve's got Steve's gonna label his. Oh, Laura, is the how about the labeler? Is it on the top of the bench? Okay, bring that here. Please, thank you. So what I like to see is no, it's the ba it's the battery should be good. Just push it once. Ed, you want to, to keep a record of this. So can yes. you tell me what it is you want recorded? I've got a pen and piece of Well, paper. Steve had changed his from what it was, but just for argument's sake, it could have been. It was 0.83 kilohertz of deviation. 0.83. Yes, and uh, his radio is an IC an ICOM IC twenty seven twenty. 2720. Yes. ICOM 2720. Yeah, IC 2720. And we had that at 142. Now the important thing, why do we label it? Um, a couple of things there. That radio and TNC now is a matched pair. If he changed the radio out, we'd have to retest it because it might have a different levels, the impedance might be different, the, the drive levels are different, uh, the, the inputs are possibly different, so it can be uh, considerably different for many reasons. So there you go, Steve will get you to put that on when, when we're finished there. And uh, so, any questions so far? The software you're running on the laptop, what is that? Uh, this is just a terminal program, this happens to be putty, and really all we need to do is to get into the calibration mode is be in either simple terminal, um, airmail, TerraTerm, putty, any of anything terminal that will talk to the TNC uh, at its basic level. Okay? So it doesn't really matter that which, which it is, putty or airmail or what. It's all, it's all the same. It's just sending the command to the TNC saying put it in the calibration mode. Now make it, now put on the transmitter and send the two tones simultaneously. That's the whole plan here is to do that because when packet sends it, there's two tones, a low tone and a high tone. And, and what, is the, what is the command to get you there? When That's you're in that at, when you're in the terminal mode and you have the command prompt, yeah. all you have to type is C-A-L, Charlie Alpha Lima and enter and it'll bring you a small little menu. Okay? And if you forget, you can just go help. <laughs> and there's a whole list of commands that come up there. Or more, than, more than you want. <laughs> or, or you can print off the entire command manual. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so that's basically what we want to do is get things set up and be able to do it. Let me just see if this will go any louder here. We'll see if we can. I'll just bring on the transmitter again here. So you can actually hear it. I didn't want to make too much noise. So that's 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 what the that's the that's the audio that's coming being generated uh, out of the TNC and sent through the radio. Okay? So if we go send a mark and then we send a space. And I can actually look at those two frequencies and see what they are. Um, Cantronics, of all the ones I've tested, and I've had probably hundreds across my bench over the years, they're never out. They're, they're so close, they're within two hertz uh, of being on, and they could be further than that out. So that's why we've chosen the Cantronics product because they produced the KPC-3, the 2, the 3, the 4, uh, you know, in, in the, in really, they've been out for a lot of years and they're still working today. The things that I see are um, when people go to plug the, they have the power on and they go to plug the DC cable into it, and they don't have the Cantronics one, the nose of the connector is exposed plus. And then they go to put it in, it hits ground, and then, then it burns a trace inside the, the TNC. I've seen that twice. I've had to repair two of them. Other than that, I've only seen one other one, and I, I happened to have it, and it was one of mine. It just all of a sudden, it just stopped working. I haven't even had a chance to, to fix it because I have 
a few others in that. And, and Ed will show you hopefully on Sunday, if there's time, what you do to bypass the power input. Uh, he started doing that with some of ours. Yes. He was, he was showing uh, Matt earlier on. And so that way you don't have that extra little power cable hanging off. It's of so nice. Right there. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I did one for Steve, I think. Uh, all the ones in our trainers. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically what, what we're saying there is, um, you'll notice everything I have is all Motorola. Well, I worked for a Motorola company for a while, and I learned the Motorola stuff. And, and these, these are radios that I'm using that are 30 years old, and they are just flawless. Um, they actually have 12 volts on the little connector on the back. So I feed the 12 volts into the TNC. Does anybody have an idea how much current does a TNC draw? It, it, it draws 14 milliamps until you turn the LEDs off on the front of it and it drops from that. So it's so efficient it's almost scary that it, it runs so, so low in current. Uh, great for hilltop stuff. Um, I, I put a 9 volt battery on mine on a yes. little pigtail and it lasted me over a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're pretty efficient uh, device. They're pretty bulletproof. Um, they've gone through a whole pile of changes. Um, if I had my way, they would have never gone to USB. USB is not quite as forgiving as the, the RS-232 version. Uh, and if you wanted to do a node stack where you have to cross from one TNC to the other, you do it on the DB25. So it's a little hard to do that when you've got a USB port. But the USB port where are you going to find a computer today that's still got a D DB9 connector for serial ports? So. so that's where we are as far as tuning them up. Why we chose for a standard down in, in my area, in the Capital Regional District, and every EOC basically has that model. We made the decision not to limit the radio as into the standard because, of course, when you talk about cars, do I like Ford, Chev, Dodge, Mitsubishi, what do I like, you know, Lamborghinis or whatever. So we don't care what radio it is. It's tough when people, you, one thing you have to worry about on some radios, just so you know, microphones that are plugged in, when you key, sometimes they're hot. So your packet keys it up and you got stuff going, your music in your room, it comes out over the radio when it's transmitting along with the, da the, the data tones because a lot of them, they go in the microphone jacks or it, they have a jack on the back and it's, it doesn't actually shut off. So if it's Yeah, picks up the sound. Leave the computer there. Leave the computer. Yeah, I'm just going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll fire through this and see how quickly we can get these done. Never pull a cord by its tail. Never pull a cord by its tail. So we have a Kenwood with a TNC somewhere, and then we have the HF. So we've got a packed door unit as well. So this is an all-band Yezu, but we've got a packet uh, TNC on it. I don't have power on here. Um, here's power. There's got one under here too. We're gonna use. We can we use your computer. Yeah. Yeah. In the back. In the back. For the oh, uh, for it's a USB. It's a USB one. Right there. Right there. Yep. Same as mine. I know these regional districts that can afford all these Panasonic textbooks. Don't don't anyone here? Here's the price of the seller that sells them for cheap by the yeah, yeah, sometimes they have, well, yeah, you never know, it's a crapshoot sometimes. So we had a uh, previous telecommunications coordinator was uh, 
able to approach the local RCMP detachment and got a pallet load of these things for us. Right? And All right, I got to figure out how to turn things on again. Oh, up here. Yep, no, no, I know what was there. Okay, and if it's, it's not, not, it's on the right frequency. Okay. That's perfect. That, what's wrong with the not good ones? Uh, they can heat up pretty good mm -hmm. with RCMP. So the next thing is. Don't buy it. This is. It's ours. Well, it's, eight, 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 it's an eight, 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 eight fifty-seven. Eight fifty-seven. Eight fifty-seven. Eight fifty-seven. Eight fifty-seven. And they're available <coughs> online, used um, for you know the, you'll pay for them um, in the order of three to five hundred bucks. But there's okay. someone in the call account that always has them for sale on Craigslist, and they keep reposting the ad about every three or four days. And Go to a uh, BC nice. auction. Keep going to the BC auction list. I bought one there. They were pallets of them. I remember. <laughs> oh, and I just got a. Oh, I just got to put the right com port here. I uh, just got to remember how to do it, Steve. Just close up. Just close. Cancel. Just open and it's down in the bottom. Right there. Which one? I know it's COM port 9, I just got to change this to COM port 9. Okay, just close this thing. Just close it. Okay. Okay, so just open it up again. It's easy way to do it. Yeah. I, I don't use it that Serial. often. Yeah, Serial. 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 There we are. And we are connected. Yes. 2.15. 2.15. Okay, so this particular radio is 2.15 kilohertz deviation. Okay, so basically what I did is same thing as I did in the last one. We're on the same frequency. The radio's on the same frequency. I ended up bringing up the calibration. I put in the command T, which gets both two dual tone. Looked at the, the deviation here, and it was at 2.15, and I increased it to 2.75. And then I, I got out of the program, and then I'll type the XMIT level. And if I can type right, it would be better. Uh -huh. That is 52. 52. Yes, 52. Okay. Okay. No, so that's an 857. It's a Yezu. Yeah, it's an yeah. all bander. So when when we set up our TNCs, then for the command of XMIT level, we put put in the number 52. 52. Uh, it's interesting because this is 52. My Kenwood um, 71 V71A is 35. But you'll take a look at a lot of these Motorola's and they're like 200, maybe three and things like this. Yeah. Very, very different numbers. Yeah, Every, it's, you can't just set something automatically as default. Mm -hmm. Now to give you an example, early on when we did uh, airmail, uh, so this one at 52, airmail automatically set it to 500. So you can imagine what 500 is for deviation, it would just be driving it into distortion totally. Right. So that's yeah. why... Oh yeah, it sounds lovely. <laughs>